Hi everybody, I'm Mark Becky, Research Director for AI with the Futurum Group. Welcome to the AI Moment, our weekly podcast that explores the latest developments in enterprise AI. We are literally in a moment. The pace of change and innovation in AI is unprecedented. Uh, the world has never seen anything like what we experienced when ChatGPT launched in October of uh, 22 and kickstarted the generative AI era. And with the AI Moment podcast, we distill the mountain of information, separate the real from the hype, and provide sure-handed AI market analysis from the latest advancements in AI technology and the mutating vendor landscape to AI regulations, ethics, and risk management. Typically, the show is a little somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes long, uh, sometimes different types of segments. Uh, today, we're going to do a cover, uh, a topic that uh, I'm, I'm kind of watching very closely right now. It's called, I'm calling it Generative AI Observability and Policy Management. And what we're going to do here today is talk about a new product launch came out from Cisco called Motific. And, they're, and we're going to talk about that and some similar products and why they are needed. And really what I'm going to try and dig into a little bit is there's a difference between some things that are going on in the marketplace. There's some terms called, which we're used to in IT, called observability, uh, security, control. And so there are products that are being developed right now that will serve uh, for observability, security, and control for generative AI. On the other hand, there's a couple other things that are going on. One would be the idea around AI policy management, and that being something that is related or different from AI governance. So um, what we're going to do first is I'm going to take you through a little bit of the Cisco um, information, and then we'll we'll circle back to these uh, some of these definitions. So here's what happened um, on the sixth. So it was yesterday uh, at part of at Cisco Live in in uh, Europe. Uh, Cisco announced the preview of this launch of a product they're calling Motific. And they're describing it as a SaaS product that will help organizations uh, deploy trustworthy AI, generative AI. And it came out of their uh, incubator part of their company called Outshift. And what it does is it provides this centralized view across an organization's uh, generative AI, and it empowers the IT and security teams to deliver generative AI across an organization with control over the data. Uh, it has it provides security for all of that that's going on. Uh, it looks into responsible AI, and, and it, and it kind of manages costs. So here are kind of the key details. Uh, it's a um, the, one, one of the things that I think is important right away is to understand that this is a it's a vendor agnostic uh, kind of solution. So foundation models don't matter. It doesn't matter what kind of vendors the company has. This is an overlay to it's an overlay type of solution to all those things that are going on within a company. So the the cool parts about what at least what Cisco is saying it will do is that it cuts deployment times. Uh, with these compliance controls for over usage, for overrun spending, and the integration of organizational specific data sources. So what they mean by that is uh, um, proprietary data uh, from your, your own data sources. And then it, what it does is it gives some automation to configuring assistance, uh, abstracted APIs, or uh, RAG of, um, as, a, as a methodology. And going further, it's got these built-in policy controls, uh, which an organization can use to customize, uh, or innate, and, and it allows those companies to provision uh, based on their internal policies. Uh, so controls, controls include things like uh, controls for sensitive data, like PII, personal uh, identifiable information. In terms of security, it's got uh, controls for prompt injection, and for and it also has controls for trust related related ex risks, which are the ones that we've talked about a lot on this show, which are toxicity and hallucinations, those kinds of things that models, uh, language language models tend to have. And what the enterprise controls can do are 
they detect and mitigate these issues and risks uh, for any kind of LM responses. So we've seen that kind of idea as well uh, before from other uh, companies. Uh, the final piece would be it, the, the Motific tracks business processes and uh, the prompt usage uh, intelligence with these ROI and cost analysis. Uh, that includes stuff like an audit trail, uh, key metrics for tracking all the user requests, uh, and you know, Cisco is saying it'll deter shadow AI usage in organizations uh, using uh, providing these visibility into how um, an unimproved third-party Gen AI capabilities and helping IT administrators provision all of this with compliance uh, and things like that. So that's one of those things we'll talk about a little later that um, Microsoft builds into some of their products uh, that are specific to the Microsoft platform. All of that said, the product's going to be available in June. So where I was looking at this, um, here's the, the challenge and kind of the premise of our conversation today. Um, companies today and organizations today are, are having a big question. It's in-house development or outsource. When it comes to generative AI, uh, the trend continues to be a strong desire by most organizations to develop in-house generative AI capabilities. Um, which makes this idea of the centralized generative AI command control, policy control, a very logical and des desirable product um, that we're getting into now. So here's Cisco with Outshift comes out with this, uh, you know, they're leaning on um, a very historic experience that they have with IT policy controls. They come in and they put out this product that's a, a comprehensive and product agnostic solution that's called motivic right so um there's a few things i wanted to run through and we'll get into some of those uh definitions again and where i think this is going and what it, it it it's got some um potential for what people really need to be looking at so first you have to understand the difference between ai management and ai governance and there's some overlap to this and there's some products out there that do some of these things. So, right, so um, there are these products that are gonna provide observability, uh, you, know, a, a, you know, security control, they're all growing. There's a few, one's called Dy from Dynatrace, that's very similar to Motific, uh, and, and a startup called Calypso AI. They offer similar products, and they're designed as these overlays to any generative AI product and to other non-generative AI products that interact with generative AI within an organization. And I think the approach kind of leans into these legacy command and control, policy control systems that have been very effective and proven to be very trustworthy for uh, organizations for a long time. And there, the interesting thing there is, is a, there's a certain amount of trust organizations have with these legacy vendors, and that puts Cisco in a good spot. Um, so, but on the other hand, you have this family of AI governance products and even data governance products that are sort of related. In particular, there we've talked earlier, there were products that came out. One was Watson X Governance from IBM and AWS's Guardrails for Amazon Bedrock. Um, these are products that help organizations manage generative AI systems uh, but in both those examples, they're not uh, vendor product agnostic. So they only work within the IBM or the AWS constructs. Um, that would be the same as we just mentioned for um, Microsoft Copilot. It works within Microsoft applications with a lot of these controls, uh, but not outside of it. So let's go over here and talk about these um, these definitions that might help us a little bit. So there are terms being thrown out there and I'll give you a few. It's observability or AI observability. There's AI policy management and there's AI governance. So I went around, I looked at some, some uh, definitions. So, so for AI observability, I pulled up one from Y Labs, which is a startup that does AI observability. And this is what they said, they, this is what they, how they described it. An AI observability system collects uh, statistics, performance data, and metrics from every single step of your 
machine learning lifecycle and, and delivers actionable insights to stakeholders. That's a system that needs a view into each stage of the data pipeline and thus should be relatively infrastructure agnostic while providing scalability to your data size. By automating the insight extraction process, teams can collaborate and deliver models and in turn respond to issues more effectively. So they said that the result is an end-to-end -end observability pipeline that is that the organization of that pipeline is that an organization will get timely insights about changes to data and model behavior in production. Especially useful for surfacing common machine learning issues such as drift, stale models, data quality changes. And these signals can be fed back into the ML process and accelerate the model development lifecycle. So you get an idea of what uh, people are talking about when they say observability. On the other hand, you have policy management. So AI policy management, uh, there was an article in eWeek that just uh, put out a definition I thought was good. So we'll read that for a second. It says, an AI policy is a dynamic documented framework for AI governance that helps organizations set clear guidelines, rules, and principles for how AI technology should be used and developed within the organization. It goes on to talk about what some of those are, you know, vision for usage within the organization, mission statements and clear objectives or KPIs that align with that mission. Uh, and many of the things we've heard about that are part of um, AI governance frameworks, right? So when they talk about policy management, they're really talking about AI governance. So now you can see uh, there's some little, there might be some confusion in the marketplace about these terms. Uh, and there's some overlap between what certain products do. Uh, but the general idea would be AI governance kind of is a family of things that might also be called AI policy management. But then there's this other part that's AI observability and security, which is kind of this different idea as well. They're slightly different. Um, both are interesting. So I would say this, another piece that I think is going to be interesting is that there, um, you know, wonder about these products is that there's a lot of pieces to connect. And if you set aside this, particularly the agnostic, the, the vendor agnostic pieces. So I, I was looking at the motific piece and I think that anything's related to that, that's non vendor specific. Um, the biggest challenge is going to be these integrations, the complexity of the integration. So uh, in a generative AI case, uh, that would mean you may have one or more foundation model integrations. You may have third party AI development platforms to integrate like Hugging Face or GitHub or Amazon Bedrock or Google Vertex, on and on it goes. Uh, you'd have third party or internal data management systems. You have third party or internal computing platforms. So you can see there's a lot of different pieces. And I think it'll be interesting to see if these new AI management systems uh, can connect all the dots and how quickly they can do that. And the good news is that legacy observability security control products from you know, companies like Cisco, they're used to these deep integrations and these wide ranging integrations. So uh, will it be a little different for AI? Sure. Uh, but these are going to be, you know, when you're looking at these vendors that have done this for other types of AI integrations, maybe uh, it won't be such a, a big issue. But the big question will be how long will it take to do those kinds of things and get you up and running? The last piece I'm going to talk about here is this idea that, um, you know, most organizations are thinking about, they're in this process of deciding where generative AI operations are going to live. And, and, and for their use, right? Will it be public cloud? Will it be private or on-prem clouds? And, uh, you know, are these products that we're talking about Motific particularly, is it better suited for one over the other? Um, so the Outshift executives I spoke to um, told us that um, Motific works with uh, in either of those types of environments and that Cisco was really uh, the, since we're at the front end of these things, it's really flexible about where to go with that, whether it's on-prem or, or in the public cloud, they don't see a real difference. Uh, so that's good news uh, uh, there, but it could be interesting how these things kind of roll out and work if they're in a, a public cloud setting versus an on-premise type of setting. So 
kind of in conclusion of that, this is, um, you know, these are um, products that uh, I think there's some challenges to those ideas, whether it's the, the AI management products particular versus maybe the governance ones that we talked about that were more um, application specific. Um, but I think the demand and the need for them is going to grow dramatically over the next year. And these are the types of systems, along with other types of governance uh, tools, that will help organizations really tame generative AI risk. And it will kind of push us towards that idea that you know, organizations will use AI responsibly when they do this type of thing. So there's a, you, we think about it, there's a precedent. Um, companies have been thinking about uh, these kind of controls outside of AI. Uh, and, and how policy controls and um, you know observability was important to them outside of AI, uh, and I think that this is a really good. Uh, we're going to see a lot of companies looking to implement this, uh, these kinds of uh, controls over the next year, and I believe that that's really going to help uh, settle the industry, settle the industry down, settle people's fears about what uh, AI could do in a rogue situation. I think we're going to see a lot less of that because of these types of controls. Okay. So that's really all I had today is kind of a quick view of those kinds of things. And keep uh, uh, looking out. We're going to watch and see what other kind of companies end up in the space. But I, I think it's a theme we'll be looking at through the year. So I want to thank you for joining. Uh, me here today on the AI Moment. Be sure to just uh, subscribe and rate and review uh, the podcast on your pure preferred platform, and we'll see you next week.